you'll tell me in your own words after this, but my understanding is it's like, you just want to build like a crew of absolute assassins, <laughs> <laughs> like just an absolute, like amazing crew that just go job to job, smashing out the best joints around town. This is Sight to Studio <laughs> episode 11. Beautiful. We have Oscar Mellor. Do you prefer Mellor or Mellor? Uh, it's much for much. It's Mellor. Okay. Mellor. Okay. Nice to have you here, brother. Thanks. Good to be here. Get closer to the been, mic. It's been, it's been long overdue. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Since episode one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we work together. You're a builder. Correct. I'm a cabinet maker. Correct. And uh, we've done quite a few jobs together and we really right. enjoy, or at least I really enjoy working with you. Likewise, we gel since yeah. the start. We both, I think, started out at a very similar time. Yeah, you, you know, were you were still working in commercial and doing- Correct. So sort of we're starting to branch out. Yeah, I think we I think we started out potentially a similar time and I, um, I uh, was, was getting a, we we're doing an intricate job where we're doing a lifting, craning in a, a roof and refurbing a, a craning in a, a lift, mm. you know, via, via a roof and um, in, in an existing house that was only recently built and we, um, we had a lot of joinery refurb and I think I came across and we, we started in discussions and then we started from there and it went really well and yeah, it went that pretty was well, the beginning. Yeah, that, it w- wasn't a whole lot of joinery. It was nice. It was, did a nice little study mm. in a pantry. Mm. Yeah, it was good. It was a... Uh, yeah, it was a just an intricate job. It wasn't wasn't too big. Yeah, overall, and um, yeah, it went it went really well. It yeah. actually, yeah, it led to it led to for both of us a lot of additional work out mm-hmm. of that. It was a very good um, it was a good lead. Yeah, it was enjoyable and it was fruitful. For mm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, t- uh, where where does your story sort of begin? Like you sort of in your professional life, you uh, you started out as a carpenter out of school, is it? Mm, correct. So. Yeah. Basically, uh, even at school, we had a, um, a trade workshop mm. and I was working a little bit in that and, um, you know, sort of always enjoyed doing things with my hands and also not, not being so much cooped up in an office and I, um, or in the classroom back then. And so basically when I finished school, I had an opportunity down in the country uh, and I just thought I'd take it just to get out of Melbourne and try something different, working with um, a family friend uh, doing a renovation on our beach house, actually. And so I moved down there and worked down in the country for a while at the beach and really thoroughly enjoyed it and then ended up, you know, starting my apprenticeship and, you know, completing that and then working as a carpenter for um for years and then i kind of came to a pivot point where i thought i I could go start maybe doing a carpentry business and um going down that road or i thought maybe i'm going to throw myself out of the residential game into the deep end a little bit and i started working with um some larger commercial builders in a in a site management role uh and kind of that took took that road for a few years and gained some uh incredible experience um through through that road and then uh yeah obtained both a domestic and a um commercial builder's license and started lawcom yeah so if we just go back to sort of your carpentry days i think that's a really interesting mm. part it's you know really foundational part of what makes you a good builder i think is your experience in architectural carpentry mm. so did you when you started your apprenticeship were you already did you start with an architectural builder or we did i didn't even i wasn't even uh aware of the whole architectural scene we were just building these uh pretty pretty fabulous um houses uh all over victoria not even just in melbourne and um we, yeah we were building some pretty 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 special properties and i i did my apprenticeship through in that but the penny still it still hadn't really dropped like we were doing amazing work i was still reading plans it was all it was still a little bit foreign to me even when i got to the end of my apprenticeship so when I left my apprenticeship, I actually ended up working um, with a volume builder, just doing a lot of framing and a lot of 
repetitive work and I found uh, I didn't enjoy it because it was very different to what I've been doing, but I picked up a lot in in speed and, uh, you know, reading plans and those sort of things. Um, and then I came back into the architectural space with a really, really good uh, company and group of carpenters and uh, really cemented into a carpentry position there for a few years, um, you know, just uh, helping being a leading hand carpenter effectively and doing some amazing jobs that if we um, won, won awards and, and uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was very enjoyable and I, le- I learned a lot working with um, – a lot of people in in that space. A lot of a lot of very uh, uh, um, experienced uh, older carpenters. Yeah, and um, I feel like it's changed a lot since then as well. Mm. I feel like the other generations of carpenters, maybe we we it's 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 quite expensive to have on apprentices and um, train them up. I feel in the same way when I was taught, uh, and it, it's it's a bit of a different dynamic today, and I feel like. When I was doing working, even even as a qualified carpenter, working with other more experienced carpenters, we were constantly having a lot of time a day to learn and go through particular motions and and really um, cement in that that experience. Yeah. So just just one for the kids out there who are thinking about getting into carpentry. Um, you said that the penny didn't drop for you in terms of what architectural carpentry is versus normal carpentry. Yeah, just just to give him give him a like a breakdown of what is architectural carpentry versus your standard house you know, frame just, or whatever. Just uh, for example, building. You know, when, when we would say doing volume building or other sort of rep, re, repetition building and um, whacking up a lot of fra- uh, framing. You know, everything. For example, is. Um, prefab Mm. so everything comes out gets dropped there you have like a very very simple plan to follow uh you know you're generally i mean at that point it was me but you're generally the apprentices with uh a leading hand who's marking out everything and they're not it's it's very speed based so you're not you don't have as much time to um sit back and go through those motions uh as opposed to say in an architectural uh project where you might you, 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 you're in the bathroom, you're building a curved wall or such. You almost got to you, think you're about- You're sitting there and you really have to plan it out because yeah. there's so many other components like of, of finishes and other elements that have to, you know, work in comparison with this detail that it, it doesn't, it, it takes the, the speed factor of it out, out of it a little bit as in um, it, it has to be a bit more methodical. And then yeah. once it's all planned out, you can do it where I found in the other- type of industry it's very you know you get in there and things don't have to be even though they, they should be they don't have to be as as right as uh you know in in sort of um the general carpentry framing aspect well in architectural carpentry you've got to think about the you've got to work back from the finished product correct correct whereas if you're just throwing up frames, no disrespect. Exactly. You just and even when it comes just, to the straightening walls, it's just about speed and mm-hmm. getting in there and you know getting it getting it done. And a lot, and that's why a lot of um, a lot of uh, volume built is priced on linear or square meter. Where I don't find that you could do that in architectural building. Yeah. So the particularly in renovations and such. They're also two completely different kettles of fish. As in, we do a lot of uh, renovations and yeah. extensions and. Uh, this one would be, you know, like a whole new estate. So it's very, very different. Yeah. So your background in carpentry uh, gave you a really good base for what you're doing now, which is architectural residential building. Correct. And we do uh, architectural light commercial as well. Yeah. Uh, But that also gave you a sort of good entry point into commercial site supervision. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like um, particularly from doing the architectural renovations um, in, in heritage mm. settings and um, inner city settings, which is, presents a lot of challenges. When I went to um, the commercial setting, it was, I, I felt like I had a very, very- What were you building? Up. Like schools, bars, restaurants? Building schools, uh, medical centres, um, uh, what pretty- we did we did a couple of bars and restaurants, but mainly it was mainly schools and medical centers. So like institutional Correct. Kind of work, yeah. 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 And um the the main thing though that even when I went transferred over to that space though, 
running a larger size with a lot of hundreds, uh, you know, unknown trades. Yeah, hundreds. Well, we did we did multiple jobs that would stem from a lot of people on site down to you know only twenty people and minimal. But um, just just the coordinates a large structure on. You know, not 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 always such a tight program, but just more in that administration role and um, getting used to those procedures. Uh, you know, was was something that was very very foreign to me, um, and it was very good to go into the kind of deep end and get that experience. And um, you know, a lot of it I adapt into into my into my business today and back into residential. There was a lot of things that I didn't you know I didn't know or didn't have that experience to apply in a in a residential uh, setting because I just the uh, builders that I'd worked with didn't operate like that and then when I went over to the commercial side there was a lot of infrastructure that was very very beneficial on the systems on, and on the systems on the processes yeah. yeah correct that um you know that I found uh, extremely useful and even just generic you know I was quite young when I when I made that transfer over um, Were you just freshly qualified up for a few years, or? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I, I think it was. I think it had been about f- four years. Mm. So I was in my like mid, mid late twenties. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah mid late twenties, yeah. and um, even just going and dealing. I was I was very young compared to a lot of um, trades and other people that I was working with, and even breaking things out of me. You know, going and getting everyone together to plan like toolbox meetings and having all those sort of meetings, and um, you know. It, it assisted with my confidence as well, mm. just being able to, uh, you know, implement program on the side or have those sort of, you know, some some fantastic meetings, also some, you know, pretty, you can have some pretty ugly, uh, yeah. you know, confrontation as well, but also just being able to handle and get over those hurdles and challenges. Yeah. So I think that's, that's one point, you know, I was thinking about what do I want to talk about here with Oscar? And I think one really valuable message we can deliver is to tell your story of you've got that experience in architectural carpentry and being were you a foreman as well yeah i was a foreman as well yeah like architectural resi which really teaches you about sort of the romantic side of the trade and gives you that critical thinking Mm, in terms of yeah a lot of the passion it's all the passion comes from that yeah there's i never i never there's i there's i never really connected the same way as I did with architectural, residential, and there are, I've had some fantastic um, architectural fit outs mm-hmm. that have been in you know some uh, really really similar settings that have hit home in the same way. But um, yeah, nothing nothing resonates with me like that that part of the industry. Yeah. So you've got that that experience uh, in in there that's sort of taught you detail, taught you thought process, taught you how to build, right? Mm-hmm. Like how to build, but Knowing how to build is very different to knowing how to run a building company. Yeah, right? correct. And that's what the commercial. And that's right. And, you. and even when I was, yeah, correct. And even when I uh, was in the commercial, I, I never, there was stages particular to them. I was very burnt out. I was very burnt out. Like, uh, and, you know, running a business, obviously you work large hours, you know, sometimes you don't get breaks and it's very tiresome. But I felt like when I was in commercial, that was a whole different level of that. And it's very applicable. Like even to, even when we're really, really grinding at work and it's, and it's very busy and, you know, the last couple of years, this is going to be the first time we've actually been able to wind down and take some time off over Christmas because it's just been, it's been crazy busy. But I felt like when I was in the commercial world, that, that really um, pre- prepared me for that mm. because we were doing crazy hours like that. It was a similar setting to that. Mm. And, as much as I didn't enjoy it, I felt like the experience needed to be done to yeah. take into my own set of skills in developing a business. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of people enter the architectural resi space, mm. sort of t- like two paths I see. One is sort of from the architectural carpentry mm. pathway, sort of architectural carpenter into sort of site supervisor in the mm. resi space into like like a site-based PM kind of role, mm. whereas, uh, and then uh, the other group are like what we call sometimes in a derogatory way, the uni builders, the guys who study construction yeah, management. Yeah, or come white out. collar builders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so you have your uni builders and you get your carpenters. Mm. Um, what you've done is sort of you've become a hybrid of the two. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And it was, um, it was something that I kind of 
noticed at that at that age, and I was speaking my brothers in um, the tier tier one space, and I was speaking to a few of his contacts and just trying to get a feel for it. And and I was you know I was doing night school, and I just it just dawned on me. I just had a you know being in my mid a late twenties awakening. I, you know, it was it was just dawned on me more that I had a massive gap in my knowledge in the industry yeah. and. That, you know, being in your mid, late 20s and be thinking, you know, kind of you already know everything. I, I, I'm, you know, I just kind of dawned on me that I, in a way I knew nothing. I'd only kind of, in my mind, conquered one aspect of it. And then to go back, you know, to the bottom of the whole food chain as well when I went, because that, that's the other thing as well, when you kind of work your way up as a carpenter to some level and then you go into that space, you're back at the bottom. They, they, you know, it, it applies in one way, but really, you're there to do almost a diff- uh, completely different type of role, and then you have to kind of go back up through there. So we ended up. We worked. Um, I worked with some larger companies, and then we kind of went to some more boutique commercial builders where the roles um, diversified from foreman to project manager. You're doing contracts administration, and you know, you kind of had your fingers spread out over a bunch of different roles, which was, you know, very, yeah, as I said, very applicable to taking to, you know, starting up a business and, and applying that. Yeah. And, and so your experience in, uh, so that in the formative sort of years as an architectural carpenter in, you know, combined with that experience in commercial sort of came together uh, mm. when you started your company, Lawcon. Mm. Uh, residential commercial architectural fit out company yeah um, correct and and so tell us a story of sort of what was that process like that thought process from working as a sort of in that fast-paced sort of environment of commercial mm. and then how did you create that shift because that, that was very impressive for me as well how did you it, create it was, the shift we were we, we were doing but I was working around the clock at the time and I really, really wanted to, you know, we're working also all over Victoria and I wanted to kind of concentrate back into um, into the inner city because I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed, I always thoroughly enjoyed working around the inner city. And um, so I kind of worked out my vision of what I would want to do and where, it wanted, where I'd want it to go. And I first had my residential license. I just, I kind of was just always doing something on the side while I was working and I'd been, I'd finished night schooling and I was working full time. I thought, you know, I'm just going to start looking at this and looking into it. And then um, ended up just kind of started following through with the application and then um, uh, applying and getting that. And then I thought, well, now I've got it. You know, I think, I think I still, I'm going to see, you know, how how I can branch out with this. I knew it wasn't going to be a, a sudden movement and I wanted to plan it out. So we I spoke to a friend who's in the industry and um he he actually referred me on to an architect that he does a lot of work with. And so I was speaking with them and you know there was I think we 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 kind of put together a couple quotes on some smaller ones uh through some other um leads of my own and that that didn't really um eventuate. And then we we had this this one contact that I'd been speaking with and a job was in planning and we kind of were working on on that, and uh, as that progressed, we developed a quote. And I ended up um, actually was I was away at the time. They ended up calling me and um, saying that I got the job. And we were we had to start. Um, we were starting when we when I when I came back, and it was it wasn't there was a lot in it. It grew it grew the the client it grew legs while we were building it. There was a lot of um, additional works put onto it, but. Uh, it was it was a perfect size that I knew I could manage, and it was quite close to where I reside. So I knew that I could be there in the morning, um, get there after work. I also had uh, teed up all the um, contractors to work on there, and had a foreman on there that I knew as a foreman carpenter. And so I was doing all the administration and project managing it while they were doing all the on site day to day routine. And then you know we, that was a bit of a trial. There was a it was just a bit of a to to dip dip my toe in to see how that would work and how I could improve on that and it worked it worked really really well and we got a lot a lot of work you know out of that that one job and a great relationship with that architect and then it just started stemming from that then um we had another one and we tried it again um and tweaked a few little bits and pieces on it and it worked even better and then all of a sudden this workflow just started to come in 
And simultaneously, the commercial side was, it got to a point, COVID actually came in and they started to go very quiet. And um, it just kind of, an op- a door opened and it, and it just actually worked out into a, to a good time to, to make that swap over, um, you know, probably particularly co- because of COVID. And at that, fir- when COVID first came in, we actually had ended up having a huge influx of work that bridged us for you know a full twelve months, and then um, and then as we you know completed those projects, more word of mouth and more people that we met and more um, leads and connections and um, you know networking, and then that that started to evolve as well. And you know that's that's kind of how it all happened. Yeah, and so it was. Busy in commercial, it was, it was sort of getting burnt out. You were yearning yeah, for the yeah pre pre COVID yeah. end of two thousand nineteen coming into twenty twenty was yeah I was very very burnt out. A lot of hours, a lot of um you know we we're running large jobs. I felt uh, that maybe we're a little bit stretched as well in the company. Mm-hmm. Um you know as even though it's good for people to tap into different roles. We, it, it, yeah, it was very, very busy. And then as COVID started to come, everything started to, well, I, I felt in the commercial side, particularly, we were seeing a lot of tenders that would have been one, a lot of builders going in, uh, you know, undercutting or going in very, very uh, competitive. And then it pushing other people out of, out of their space that they kind of, that were, they kind of, um, you know, were their target market, so to speak. Yeah. Um, because they just couldn't compete with some other builds that were just coming in, yeah, very, very competitive. And then they started to go a, a bit quiet and um, a few people started started leaving and then, yeah, that's that's where I swapped over. But it, when it was all happening at its full pelt, yeah, it's very, it's a very fast-paced industry. So what are you, like what are the key differences that you've seen in that transition from commercial into high-end resi? Like what, what are the things that? The biggest changes on like what have you liked and sort of not liked. Sorry, repeat that. So my phone just started. That's okay. <laughs> um, the differences in commercial and high and resi now, like where you are now, mm. what because you were in both at the same time. Like, what were some of the key differences you were seeing in the in the two? One of the one of the biggest things that um, was very challenging was um, you know it's very it's it's very uh, price based in commercial and. Um, it, it would be the, you know, trades coming in extraordinary, like almost underquoting jobs, so to speak, and also coming in and really having to be over the top of them to to get their work up to standard. And that that was just my experience. It might not be everyone, but it's very very grueling. And um, I felt like I was just always fighting, you know, an uphill battle all, all the time. Sometimes you get some fantastic uh, trades and connections, but uh, a lot of the time. We we're just dealing with very, very bottom-based um, trades, and and it's not even just that they were um, bottom-based trades. It's also that to to win the job, the whole from the start, it was everything was is screwed down. Mm-hmm. You know, to so that in, pressure from the top, it, yeah, it, it stems culminates. all the way down, stems it, all the way yeah. down, and um, creates a you know sometimes volatile uh, culture, you know, side, yeah, culture, yeah, yeah exactly, mm-hmm. that's right, and. Um, where, you know, in, in commercial, like we, when we're doing architectural, sometimes we, you know, we, or a lot of the time we find a trade that's very suited if there's a, you know, particular type of feature brick and it's a, and, and, you know, like a, a special like Krauss type of brick that has uh, a lot of feature in it and um, needs to be laid, you know, in a certain way there's, you know, that we would look for an architectural brick layer to do that, you know, and it doesn't always just become, about the price, it's about you know having to complete that work to to that standard and the right person for the job, and um, you know there was a there's a lot more I felt uh, patience in the residential architectural side, or it depend. It also comes back to the to the client, like they they are really are two different types of industries, so you can't compare. But that just being in one to the other, my personal preference was to be in yeah to to go back to architectural residential because it's just. The commercial space is just very volatile, I feel. Yeah. So what what do you what are the some like what are some of the things that you don't like as much about 
re- like architectural residue? Like, like what are the most well, challenging aspects? I, it's you know because there's a lot of passion there. The, even even through the challenges, you're always inspired and um, motivated to to get up and that's a beautiful and to go. Saying. You know, it really <laughs> it's uh and that that was the difference. And that was when I was you know in the other on the other side. It, it, I just didn't have that that um, inspiration that I have in the in the in the residential sector. Well, there you go. Who would have thought that if you're doing something you're passionate about, you'd be more but, open to embracing the process? Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Because you you know the the end result is just um, you know you're building magnificent and beautiful structures, and it's something that you're really proud of. And but in saying that, the you know the commercial space has a lot of um, benefits as well. Like all right, the from a structural point of view, we were doing, you know, large, large structures, things that I had never done in residential that, uh, you know, kind of opened up my mind and experience in, in you know, that side, of, that side of things. And also liaising with consultants and, um, you know, architects and clients and um, larger budgets, like that, that administration side of it, I think is almost... A must for somebody looking to become a builder. Well, it's more really, and more. It's like more and more relevant, especially in high. Oh, for sure. There's for sure. so much you, you can gain. You 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 gain so much experience that you know if you were to go up just the carpentry route, you 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 probably wouldn't be exposed to. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the whole building sort of becoming a builder. I mean, from the VBA standpoint, they want more sort of. You, more white collar in the builder. Oh, and and like, I think it's yeah, I definitely think it's um, you know, it, ne- it needs to happen for yeah. sure. And I think it is happening. I think a lot of people are a lot of people are doing that. And a lot of um, you know, really uh, big successful builders a lot of them have that same that same background. A lot of people that I uh, or some people that I've worked with have had that same background and it really separates um, you know, really separates them apart. Yeah, and from a building technique from a building methodology standpoint there's more and more commercial techniques and more and more commercial methodology being used in uh residential like, yeah i mean you look at sort of you know there's so much more in situ concrete for look sure the, like for the sure. cladding so, cladding systems for pier sure systems, you know ba- yeah, basement, basement systems exactly yeah. exactly waterproofing systems you yeah. know um a lot of things in the in the commercial space is heavily uh i wouldn't wouldn't say over engineered, but it's engineered to the to the max, and to um to get that experience with you know even just uh working with large machinery and surveyors and and you know it, it's all applicable into each side of the each side of the industry, and if you can separate the the pros and the cons, and you know take take what what you need to out of it, it's it's it can really help you um. When you're on, when you're out on your, when you're out on your own, to to overcome a lot of challenges or things that you know you might have, might you might get um, stumped on just because you haven't had that experience in that other part of the industry. Yeah. So you started. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> you started LawCon part time about two years ago. Three, yeah, three, three years, years ago. Year, yeah, and so it's been three years. You're full time. You've been full time LawCon for a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah. two years now. Uh, it's gone quick. Mm. Uh, I still remember, yeah. And so, like, what are some of the in that transition? Just to give some value to someone, you know, who is in commercial as a site manager, who is working as a site supervisor as a as a, on a residential site, who are thinking about doing their own thing. Mm. What were some parts of that transition that were difficult, or some challenges, or just things that people should look out for? Yeah, the the hardest thing about making the transition out into your own company. Yeah, just from working working a job to becoming a builder. For your it is yourself. it is a tricky transition, and it's just something that you shouldn't you shouldn't rush into because as as well uh, when when you're in that in that process, you know you, you're starting a new reputation. You, everything everything is uh, you know kind of crucial. As in, you don't want to you, you don't want to start and then make make the wrong mistakes and and uh, you know then throw out your confidence or you know not be able to do it because I have I've had friends that have done that as well they've branched out into their own um into their own business and they kind of they've kind of rushed into it in a way and you know they're no longer around and I spoke to them and they've just put it in the too hard basket so I think if you um sit back and take your time and also it's it's okay to make mistakes I you actually 
I in, you encourage to make mistakes, uh, but to to learn from them because that's you know you learn such valuable lessons in doing that, and also learning from um, you know speaking to people and learning from other people's mistakes. It's it's all a part of the process, and I think if you um, just ease into it and have a have a vision and a plan. And and kind of trial it out one by one. I think it's um I, I think I think you can't go wrong. Yeah. For yourself in that process, like what, what were the most difficult elements for yourself, like the biggest challenges? The biggest challenge was that uh you know, I was I was working full time, mm. so to speak. So it was it was it was like I was doing a large cashy. That's the way that I kind of looked at it from when I was a carpenter, when I would I used to always do side jobs all the time. Mm. And it, it was basically like that. Um, but you know, you you're doing it obviously you're doing it proper mm. and um i think just having the right site set up was you know having someone that i knew that was a carpenter that could and and also was a foreman and could do the job that you know i had i, I had i found that um in advance i found that far in advance so when the, the project came i wasn't then looking for that person so i had that person lined up and that was a key indicator to helping the um success of the of the project yeah because site presence on architectural jobs is that's, everything <laughs> that's it that was one thing that i found very challenging is not being able to be there and you know i was very transparent with my clients as well uh of of you know how how i was how i was managing it but also because it was i i selected places that were very close to to home or uh where i was going to be it was very easy for me to be there um you know after hours or or if I had to go and organise something or be that, it was basically like I was working in the office, but I could also be there and I could quality check on on people's work. But it is a tricky transition. It's very tricky. It's very yeah. tricky. And it's also, you know, you go for periods when you're starting out and you're still developing those connections where you're quiet. So to just jump into it head first and, you know, then not be able to, you know, to have a standstill in between, say, two projects, um, you know, you, you might not be able to finance that uh to to cover yourself or you might not be able to um you know cope through those through those parts so just having a really really good business plan and vision on how you're going to execute it is is super important and also you know you make mistakes you're just starting out you're trying things things don't work um you need to also factor that you know that that's that's probable and you and you need to accept that and embrace that that's going to happen and it's a, it's actually it's a positive yeah one thing that you that you've always been good at is um at least from my standpoint because I've always been paid well is sort of maintaining good cash flow. And that mm. that's something that a lot of guys struggle with in the industry. Um understandably, you know, the larger you get sort of that's something that's more difficult to control. For sure. But what like what were your strategies there in making well, that was it's so important. Work, working just try to starting, get a bit close to so yeah. starting it on um on the side. Yeah. Having, I suppose it was a bit of a safety net of having a, another stream of income coming in and then starting lock on on the side. So if something failed, I, I still had something supporting me as a, as a base net. But one method that I adopted from my whole <laughs> building career, or sorry, one, one thing that I've always noticed is uh, people, you know, always complaining to me about not being paid or not being paid on time. And, uh, you know, whether, uh, you know, not being at, at that point in time always, you know, I'm not, wasn't doing so, so much dealing with the accounts or anything, but one method that I was trying to do is I was using cash flow before paying myself at the start. I, uh, you know, I would, I would pay all the bills just as they come. I didn't really actually have a procedure and I was just paying all the bills as they come through and just outlaying everything and, you know, it's still having, uh, contingency in, in, in case, but basically just putting all the contractors first, um, bes- before myself, which, which is, you know, in a way easier said than, easier said than done when you've got another base stream of income coming through. And then, you know, kind of then working towards that, that, uh, end goal of the project and then taking effectively, you know, the builders, the builders cut. And I did find that that, um, excelled. You know, it, it excelled um, the program, and it did. You know, a lot of trades could. You know, they prioritize money. Money talks. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it makes it 
it's a great relationship builder and it makes it sense was it, it, it really was at the start but i the way you know it's when you then when you're out on your own you can't always use that method and i think that that was a good method while i was transitioning and it was part risk mitigated because there was an uh you know another another source of income but then again you can't expect everyone to to do that no well i mean pushing the, when you're pushing just forward when you're out on your when you're out on your own yeah. because you know it's a, it becomes a different game once you completely you know step out when you're just starting out you you got to be like self-aware that that you that what you can offer your trades your contract is a little mm. limited you know if you're you know you're not going to be there all the time to solve things solve problems with them um you may not be the most experienced in sort of in, mm. in architectural building you, you you know there's so many things that are against you you have to find those things that can provide more value to the people who you want to work for you oh for sure because it's a it's a seller's market you know with with how tight the labor you know, is you know one it, thing i found when i started as well and the reason that i uh <laughs> was doing that is because a lot of trades you know instantly we got a a, a high-end project that we were doing and you know trying to get all the trades together i was a new business new builder no one had heard of me no one knew who i was apart from trades that i knew previously in the industry but there was certain people that were cut out to do that project and there were certain people that i knew in the same trade and they weren't cut out to do that that project so branching out to all these new businesses and setting up accounts and having no financial history you know it's a, a effectively i'm a risk to to those uh, to those trades or that's how they they view it so i found that kind of using um a quick like a quick cash flow procedure helped um you know boost boost that forward and you know not not you know i made the contracts that we went into very flexible like payment terms very very flexible you know and uh just kind of going in with that method really helped me establish those connections and then you know doing that over a few projects and then easing off and actually having more structured procedures in place kind of it it, it, it balanced all out into my favor and yeah. and it, and, it, and it really helped yeah so what a as you're trying to so as you progress in the business like what are the things that you're you know what are the new challenges that you're facing now that you see are coming the new, the new challenges that i'm facing is uh, we but well, i contract everything out so i have multiple people working for me but no one works directly for me and it works heavily in my favor and then sometimes it works against me and we've grown substantially over the past few years and just trying to get that formula i'm thinking you know we had we had a labor on for a while and that worked fantastic but then they were we had uni grads and then or and they moved they they found what they were going to do after they used mm -hmm. laboring as part time worked out well for six months however long then they found what they actually the course they wanted to get into and went through their way so that that worked really well and it was a bit of a test of having someone working for us full time but still um you know we had a we this year we went from being really really busy to coming to the end of the year the jobs that were going to begin are now kind of starting in the end of Jan so we're coming cruising into Christmas which is a very nice change very <laughs> rare it's very rare and I haven't had this in a long time and it's uh you know it's, it's very nice mm. but um it's it's also worked in my favor of not having that staff and not having to be pulling my hair out or worrying about you know keeping staff payroll, payroll keeping staff busy or all, all that sort of thing but then sometimes as well when everyone is really busy and you're lining up certain trades for the jobs and you don't they don't work directly for you you know sometimes it works against you as well it um if if you need if, if you have small smaller bits and pieces that you need to do and you don't have your own in-house carpenters or working with carpenters and trying to you know they might work for me and we're doing high-end stuff and then they go and work for another builder and you know it's not the same caliber as what we're doing and so it's not drilled into them all the time so trying to have that sometimes i find that it takes up um a lot of extra time on my behalf to make sure all those details are right and it will one job will just start drawing a lot of my attention um you know as opposed to if you when i when we when you have leading hand carpenters and you train them up and they know how you operate and you know you can you, you, you there's that trust and they take on that that foreman leading hand role you know there's you can you can step back and keep continuing as the as the builder so to speak 
and diversify yeah. your time a bit more. So the, the challenge sounds like labor resources. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And so what are the what are you look what are the options and, and, that you're looking at? And things at? as well, like um, you know, I'll go through stages where I'm real admin heavy. You know, so that's something that we're looking at and maybe putting putting someone on but in, in the in the office to to even if it's part time, just to take, you know, maybe again looking at a uni grad or do I, you know, do we expand and just put put somebody on full time and get them to take all the administration work? Just it's just trying, trying and error, you know, bits and pieces at a time to see what will work and also where I want to take my business. You know, at, the, at this this year, this next twelve to fourteen months is you know a really big um, milestone, and it's also somewhere where maybe we want to kind of stabilize for a while because it's going to be we're in a you know really um desirable part in the market that we've been you know that we've been building towards mm. and you know taking it to that next step and going bigger than that maybe we you know that might be something that's down the track and then we look on putting people where this at this current place that we're at uh i feel like you know i can handle it and also um be in full control and you know it's also a part of the industry that i'm happy to to stabilize in for a while, as I said. Yeah, well, I mean, the the one of the best things about working for Lawcon is that Oscar is your point of contact for everything, and that's that's the feedback from the yeah. majority of the trades, you know. And it's, and I'm, I'm dealing you're dealing with the client, dealing with the architect, dealing with um, you know all the financials and other decisions that need to be made, so I can make you know quick decisions and get those answers you know, uh, faster than having to go through a pecking order. Yeah. So you can't scale Oscar because Oscar needs to sleep. No, that's and right. Oscar it's needs not- to look after <laughs> his Correct. baby and Oscar Correct. needs to, to, not, to not die on the job from working so that's much. That's right. So, so it's, I, re- it's really I, where you want to take – it's really where you want to take – but I, I like the idea of, well, why, why don't you just chill out and solidify for another couple of years? Well, that's There's right. It's, um, that. No, no. And we're doing what we like. We're doing, you know, managing multiple projects and, uh, you know, they're, they're of decent, decent size and decent value. And we're in the space that we want to be in. So it's really just, um, I feel like, and, and, you know, I'm always still learning things about my own business every day. Like that just, that doesn't stop. I'm still growing and learning. We've been growing rapidly in, um, you know, since we started out, uh, even just, just, just across the whole board. So it's, um, also something that I was thinking about stabilizing you. Cause I just, yeah, just can't grow unless you put more people on. It's a labor resource thing. And also having the right people to manage these sort of jobs. If I am to put on, say, a site manager, someone who has, I feel like I want them to have a similar skill set that I do because it's um you know it translates a lot into into the current work that we do. Yeah. Have you thought about if you do scale, how do you do it in a way that comes at a minimal cost to the the experience that your clients have and your trades have? Like how do you try to you know because obviously that that is going to slip, like it's it's a natural thing that that will happen especially in that transitionary process. How, have you thought about like what are some ways that you can mitigate that sort of and, – and I think that's applicable to pretty much you know, all businesses in construction mm. is, is when you scale, uh, whether it's quality or service or you, whatever. You yourself so, have just uh, you know, gone through a, through a big yeah. transition and, um, you know, you can it's, – it's, it's very it's – a, it's a challenging time as well yeah. for the um, – for the business and it's uh you know trying new methods and and putting that on it's um it's something that i feel like i feel like i need to after having also such a frantic past two years and with covid and um you know all the all the, all the projects that we've had on um i feel like i before we even take i even assess any other step i need to stabilize cement myself into where we are and then and then i feel like the building will start from there working out you know, that next section. Yeah. Because I feel like I can manage it and without sourcing, you know, the right bits and pieces, even, you know, even when we're doing tenders, I've got uh, other methods now that I've trialed and errored when we're doing tenders and, you know, um, uh, contracting even parts 
parts of that out and having people that come and just work with me during the tender that that's that's working really really well and 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 has proved as a really good method and you know just just adapting and trying and seeing this there's so many people out there that are freelancing you know this is in an administration part of it um that are freelancing and coming in and doing those sort of things that if you can set it up for them right they can take a large portion off your shoulders and you know the aim of the whole the whole part is going back to being the builder and making sure that everything is captured quality detail time and and organization and just scaling it back to those those pillars yeah i i think that's i mean apart from getting paid really quickly that's really important <laughs> <laughs> like because we miss things as well i mean like joinery is pretty complicated and and we try to make sure we nail everything but all the time like we we miss things as well and having a builder as a as a collaborative partner mm. where i'm looking out for for you you know as we're looking at a job from the end product standpoint and you're also looking out for us mm. and it just makes it such an enjoyable experience because it's it's not just it's not just like this trade a comes in then b then c then d then e then f mm. it's you know you're thinking of, you need to think about g when you're doing b for sure and, and you need people that understand that as well and uh uh you know they, they they're happy to cooperate and work through that that's a you know every the whole thing comes to being um you know it's a it's a, it's a big team effort it, it really is and um going you know having people that are happy to spend that time and go through those details they it, it just it just makes everyone's life so much easier and just alleviates so much stress yeah so um i, I just want to go back to that thing just the question for the kids mm. out there who want to a lot of guys want to become builders for example mm. what does that craft that sort of that five step pathway like what is do, what do you think is the ideal pathway for the 15 year old right now who's watching I think, this i think because there is multiple ways to obviously of course. go down that path so oh, yeah. it, so it definitely can be tweaked because mm -hmm. it's not you know just the way that i've done it has worked for me and that's just the way that my brain operates so that going down that path is yeah it's just been very beneficial to me but i i think it is super super important to step out of whatever of the industry that you're in and put yourself in the deep end in a different part of the industry to develop you know and to be very to be vulnerable with yourself and to just constantly be learning and expand so you know it's, if you come through a, a school background you know maybe you should even go work as a laborer and go work and get that on-site feel of how that sort of works and even just you know just to be on on that practical side of it for a bit even go work as, as a carpenter's laborer you know the, the carpenters are always looking you know in my experience carpenters are always looking for laborers yeah so that that would be one part of it. and then vice versa if you're if you're coming through the trade background you know go and put yourself out of the off the tools for a bit to develop that set of skills in in an administration setting you know i've spoken to um people that are licensed and they don't know how to fill out a contract properly and it's and there's and it's just because they haven't put themselves in that setting to you know to develop those those skills or they don't know what a look at just program like, is or they don't know any they don't know that side of it and yeah. it's 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 like you, you're you're exposing yourself to you know for some harsh lessons if you if you don't go and get that some sort of exposure and people people as well they you know they qualify and they think i can get top dollar and i'm just going to go and do that because i've got the right tools and everything but it's it's so much more than that you need to be competent in reading plans that was one thing actually when um even when i was in the residential setting i was i could read plans but i wasn't i wasn't fluent in reading plans and when i went to commercial and i had multiple sets of drawings and uh you know constant large jobs constantly referring to details multiple pages with specifications you know it, it just it just got drilled into me very quickly because that that is what you had to know yeah and and, and it's and it's very important so many guys that's one of the key things that's really really frustrating for me as a build day is so many people don't know how to read plans properly and they don't know how to um they don't know how to read the plans or allocate 
um, you know, so say they're looking for a detail. They don't know how to reference the other parts of the plans or other information to get that detail. And, you know, you can't expect everyone to be like that, but not having just a basic fundamental of it is, is I, I, you know, I think it's, I think it needs to really improve. And a lot of times when you speak to carpenters as well, the employer thinks that they learn it in trade school or, you know, that they learn it elsewhere, but really you need to learn it on site and, and have that, have that understanding. Um, because, you know, I feel, I feel like there's a lot of gap for failure or a lot of risk in, in not, in, in that particularly. Yeah. So, so that would be, you know, going through the fir- those first two steps is to e- expose yourself in, in different parts of the industry and, um, you know, also not to rush out, not, you know, to take, you know, to really, to stay in those different areas of the industry until you feel, you know, you've got a confident understanding of 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 construction, so to speak, you know, and and procedures. Yeah, I mean, like in this modern day economy, I think we're moving. The, you know, the successful participants in the market are more and more those who are generalists as opposed to specialists. Mm. Uh, I think if you go back like thirty years, uh, you know, and, and and it is it's quite honourable in my opinion, but people just stuck in. More, you know, stuck in the same job for 40, 50 years, mm. and they became masters at that job. Yeah, for sure. Whereas if you look at market participants today who were successful, a lot of them have a lot of skill, general skills in a lot of different areas mm. that don't go rather deep. But the analogy I like to use is going deep as a specialist is addition. You're adding to your skill, you're adding, you're leveling mm. up, leveling up, leveling up. Whereas Sort of cross pollinating across a wide spectrum of skills mm. is like multiplication, diversity. Yeah. yeah, and you and those things, like a, if you like, you can speak French and you're a builder, and you can mm. do videos. Like those things will combine to mm. create this weird little niche for you mm. where there's incredible market demand. For so sure. I'll, so I'll just tack on to the end of that that advice of the fifteen year old mm. kind of piece mm. is. Um, don't box yourself into a certain That's thing. right. And don't be scared. You know, people, yeah. if you, you know, don't it, it also don't be scared to reach out. Like I, I constantly call people that I know that are all in different different industries completely, different trades, just because they've all got so much different experience and it all applies. It all applies. Yeah. And it's just not to be nervous or not to be scared to throw yourself out there in the deep end and and to learn. And also like, you know, you would like to take that time, learn off someone else's bat, and then you know, if, transition into into you know what you, what you want to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Just be curious, right? That's it. Be curious. Be curious. Yeah, for sure. And and open minded. And I think, um, yeah, I think I think just doing those sort of getting that fundamental, not rushing into things as well, and having a bit of a plan will you know it. it it, it separates a lot of people from the rest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you always want to be a builder growing up? No, that was the other thing. I didn't know is because I had a lot of self doubt um, when I was younger. So I kind of loved what I was doing, and then I would get very comfortable. But then I would I would put my some something you know I'd be comfortable in a position, and then something would happen, and I'd move myself into another part of the industry, and then I, and then as I progressed i started to become more ambitious and uh the more the more experience i got the more ambitious i started to become which was a funny thing because i was i was quite reserved at the start i never could ever see myself being a builder i didn't even understand you know i didn't have any kind i felt even though i when i finished my apprenticeship i felt like i knew absolutely nothing i just still felt like i was just always in the deep end and i was never comfortable and then as i started to yeah just uh branch out and and get that experience i just became more and more um ambitious confident and then that started to develop a bit of a hunger and then i started trying more things and then that all just started feeding off the off each other and then uh more so after i came back to the architectural residential space as a as a carpenter by that point i was um really starting to i I was i was thoroughly enjoying it and i and i really thought you know this is i i I really, really like this. There's a lot of passion there. This, this is what I want to be doing. And, you know, I, I actually, I want to go and become uh, a builder and come back and, and do this. 
the, what you said before about your amb- your amb- ambition growing that's really interesting mm. is it like if i look at my journey i felt like i was always ambitious yeah and then no, i just no. got just got beat the fuck up when i actually went into the industry <laughs> like you just you just get beat down and down and down because you got these grand images of, of yourself yeah so just can you just so my, take my, us through that mine journey was more also mine was more the opposite i was more reserved but i was also stubborn and sometimes working uh with other people and them not being being reserved and being in my spot but then also uh i'm trying to think how to say it like other other people would or other people that i worked with i felt like that that not knowing how to do what they were doing you know feeling capped at a level then it would the stubbornness would come in and i would start to branch out and then that then that started to turn into ambition and then it started to grow from there. I don't know if that makes sense. Right. So, so you, I was very reserved and then it was, and then it was, you know, I, I felt very comfortable where I was wanting to be. I had no ambitions of, you know, being more than a carpenter. Um, but then as, as I got older and other people started progressing much uh, further in the, in the carpentry space, then I started becoming more, um, you know, it was more of even, it was more of a stubborn thing. I wanted to also be in that space because I felt like I was getting left behind, so to speak. By your peers? Yeah, like, by my work colleagues and peers. Yeah. Like from high school or like from- uh, Just in general yeah. that I work with, yeah. yeah. You know, not like a, just just as a- Just like a fun competitive- yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. And, but, you know, I wasn't, I just wasn't putting myself out there. I was, you know, I wasn't, I was, I was working, you know, pretty conservative hours, doing pretty conservative work, even though we were working on some, you know, beautiful projects, like- I felt like sometimes I was taking the the easy path out and it was when I started, um, you know, challenging myself and putting myself out there, then an ambition started to grow from that. Right. Mm. But, like, what what made you want to challenge yourself? You said you were stubborn. Like, What, what is that? Like, um, what, what, what does that mean? I was stubborn in, yeah, I'm trying to think how I phrase it. I was stubborn in um, as in, I was stubborn as in I didn't want to be, uh, I, I, initially I was reserved, but then as I felt, you know, saying uh, not expanding myself, not challenging myself, I, I started to become very stubborn as in I had to, I had to grow significantly mm-hmm. in, my, in myself. I had to have a lot of self-growth yeah. and started to become stubborn in the fact that, um, you know, no, I'm going to really, really drive this home. Like I'm going to really start putting in like for myself, I'm going to start becoming like really dominating the carpentry, my own carpentry game yeah. at work. I'm going to start really, really, really going, going for it. And then that started to turn into um, an ambition. Yeah. That's, um, that's interesting how that, that like there was that, Almost like a moment where it clicked, and it you did. Wanted. There was, yeah. there was. It was. I, I went away and did some traveling, and I came back, and I went away for a while, and I came back, and I just felt, uh, you know, and I'd also been working, like I said, in that volume building, so which had a lot of benefits in one area, but when I came back into the um, architectural residential space, my a lot of my carpentry skills needed a little bit of polishing and sharpening up, and. Um, that's where I suppose the stubbornness of, and I was working with um, a lot of peers of mine as well, and and that stubbornness of not wanting to be, you know, wanting to to step up to the plate, because um, we, because I I used to work with some phenomenal phenomenal carpenters um, in the architectural residential space, you know, really really talented people, and wanting the stubbornness of wanting to be on their level or better is is probably is where it grew and then turned into an ambition. Yeah. Did you did you play sports as a kid? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we yeah, I did. I wouldn't say I was like a real sporty kid, but I definitely yeah, I played sports. Yeah, I, I guess the reason I ask is like, does some of that sort of that competitiveness in that sense or that? I think it's when you're with your peers as well, and it's a friendly competition, and it's you know that sort of comfortable environment mm-hmm. um, it brings it out. Like amongst breeds, peers. It like breeds grow. Yeah, like breeds, yeah, 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 and they have it amongst each other as well. Yeah. So it becomes like a little bit of a, a culture thing, and you know, um, when and, and when you when you start producing, you know, and and uh, you know producing great carpentry, and you're physically doing that on the tools, you know, you get a, it's, it's very rewarding. It's yeah. very rewarding. So the more that you get into it, the more you want to self develop all your skills. It's, it, it just becomes more and more rewarding. Yeah, and then ambition grows from that. Ambition came later. Yeah. 
you, you've um, you've often put this very romantic image in my head of what Lorcon sort of could be like <laughs> 30 years from now. And it's this idea of like you just – and you'll tell me in your own words after this, but my understanding is it's like you just want to build like a crew of absolute assassins, <laughs> <laughs> like just an absolute like amazing crew that just go job to job smashing out the – best joints around town one of one of the um you know one of the things that um is inspiring is the people that i work with and like i said that group of peers that i worked with when i was uh you know doing doing carpentry like a lot of them had that and then you know what in, what drew me to yourself for instance is you have that as well and I find it very easy to work with people like that and to develop and if that inspiration that desire is there you, you can really grow on it. And it's something that I sought out. Someone might not, not, might not be up to scratch, but if they have that desire, that can accelerate them tenfold past someone who doesn't. And I think you need that in that, in that architectural space. You need that desire, that patience, that vision to want to achieve the outcome of the project. Yeah. So, so but talk more about this idea of building a, like a like it's, a it's, like it's, a, it's, it's, well, that, yeah. So going, going back to that, it's, it's, I look for that in every trade mm-hmm. and then I want to keep those trades close to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as you said, you've been working with me for a few years and it's, we've been doing, I, I've been kind of implementing a, a, a part of that methodology on site. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it really shows I've never, we've never, I've never had to advertise or get m- a lot of work of word of mouth and I feel like it just goes that that having that vision of being able to um, create someone and it's everyone has to have that same common inspiration uh, will will take us very far in the long run yeah and it's- and and people will self-develop and critique their skills and the way they do it and you know enjoy coming to work that was one thing you know that's one thing that i love now i, I you know we've got to do some grueling hours sometimes and go through you know very very uh ex- extensive extensive stages at work or periods um and being able to still be motivated because of that core inspiration passion a passion exactly is um is, is super important yeah so what what is that if we look at Lawcon like what it, what are you trying to achieve like what is that that vision or that goal of of what it, it comes from I suppose it just comes from you know doing doing uh, the architecture works just like building building art you know it's, it's and that's that's the thing it's something where you step back and just like and it, and it's constantly developing and you know stepping back and doing those doing those projects and having that um that feel that feel to it and it is just it's just it's that that itself is very expi- inspiring yeah you so know? so the vision is just to recreate the vision that. the visions yeah the vision's really just to be in the space it's not it's not to do i it's just it's just enjoying being in the space that you're in i think that's i think that's where it all comes from it's not that there's um grand desires look they they part of it is also contributing to the scenery of melbourne of inner melbourne and um and you know building beautiful projects and doing beautiful landscaping and you know creating a, a piece of art when you step back and it's it's just yeah. really enjoyable yeah so on the so sort of on the horizon for Lorcon is i mean you could we be we, in this really well positioned where you are now and just sort of s- sit tight and just keep doing great work or you can expand and you'll sort of add a little bit of a crossroads there. I think, I think we're going to stabilize, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't, we've been growing rapidly from when we started and, yeah. uh, you know, getting onto some tender lists with some really big build. I think I would, I would never have even dreamed of, um, you know, coming to this, this position so quickly uh, and even just, you know, seeing, some of the some of the other um, builders that are large, very you know renowned builders on the same tender list, uh, you know that 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 itself is very inspiring, you know. Yeah. And um, but 
you, there's there's no need to rush the race. You know, there's there's I I want you know I feel like stabilizing and exploring and you know setting into the the part of the industry that we're coming into in this next twelve to fourteen months is um you know where I'm happy to yeah to to stabilize. It's the only yeah. word I I can really really put to it. Yeah, one, I don't I don't I don't feel the need. There's other work we've had other larger projects that have been put to us. That have been told, and you know, I think I just—it's just something that I feel like, one step at a time. You know, one step at a time, and you know, the main thing is to enjoy it, as well. Like I don't want to burn myself out. I burnt myself out for years, years and years on end. Really, really burnt myself out. And you know, you gotta, you gotta enjoy life, and you gotta enjoy going to work, and um, also to, like I was saying, to build, having that that team of in, of of um, inspired and passionate trades, you know, you, you got to build that together as well. A lot of people have um, that I've worked with have been in business for a while and, and we've started, we share those same interests and they've been working with me continuously and, and their business is growing, you know, with mine as well. And, uh, you know, you want to take, you want to take them with you and they, everyone kind of in, within reason those core people that you want to take with you kind of need to grow together. And I just don't see the the need to to rush. Yeah. And like I said, I'm learning yeah. things about my business all the time. We make mistakes. Yeah. Um, you know, we learn from those mistakes. You don't wanna you don't wanna drown in those mistakes because you, you you've you've you know you've rushed it. Yeah. I, like that's very wise and that uh, that motif has run through your professional career of sort of staying where you are until you've you're ready and until you you recognize that you're ready for that next step mm. like from when you went from carpentry to commercial and from commercial mm. into building i find i find that the work will be there if you're developing solid foundations and the um you know you're building a reputation you know the the work will be there the yeah. work will be there if you if you're if you're yeah, and and it's different for me as well i have a different business model to a lot of other builders so um, you know, to you know, a lot of other builders have a lot of in-house carpenters and can grow rapidly and do that. You know, everyone has their own their own path, but this one is working very very nicely for me. And you know, I think that's 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 my that's my way of doing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've created a sort of a low overhead, low anxiety kind of environment. Yeah, the overheads can, are low. Where you can you know, and, it, and it helps. It helps. Yeah. And you, you can you can cover everything. And deliver a amazing product all the time. That's the thing. That's a, and that has its yeah. And it's like I said, it's got its pros and its cons. You know, even after doing it for three years, you know, I'm going to have to, which I which I will for the right person once I train them and when I'm ready for that point. You know, have to have that trust and build on that relationship to put them in the car. I'm definitely not, uh, you know, against putting like i want to have employees at some point down the path but uh, it's just it's just not what is the formula that is working now is working beautifully and you know but i might find this year might face new challenges and that that formula changes again and i have to adapt so it's got to be versatile as well yeah it's got to be versatile yeah i mean that's that's beautiful i um i, I guess yeah this is why i really wanted to talk to you because i i did want to go deeper and i want you to share i guess what your thinking and sort of method is um i think because i think it's a very very wise trajectory you've taken and it's a very sort of uh, thoughtful and wise way you've navigated your professional career and i think it can be really really valuable for the guys out there who want to get into the industry or want to mm. become builders um yeah definitely look it's um Everyone has to do what what works for them, but having a really open mind and really, you know, putting yourself out of your comfort zone, or even if you feel like you're taking, you know, it's just a typical saying: ten steps back to go, you know, twenty step or what is it? Something steps <laughs> one step something, back to go ten step forwards, but it's something. actually not. It's actually with the way that we're doing is go. It feels like you're going ten steps back to go twenty steps forward. And um, it's 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 crucial. You need to you need to be open minded, and you need to keep learning. You need to be open to mistakes. You need to try and preempt your mistakes and mitigate risk that is coming. So, but um, also not to 
you know, not not to um to dwell on it, to really to really learn and to to move on. And also, you know, there's times where you need to make less to make more, and you know, you you just have to be open minded to to a lot of those things. Yeah. And so, who should uh, who should get in touch with Lawcon? Who who can who can Lawcon help the most? Lawcon people people who want to you know develop in that space in in what in what way is it coming whether it's people who want to work for you or to, people to, you want to work for or yeah so the people yeah that's a good question um you know the people that want to work where we, it's so it's so open if somebody was you know thinking to do that it, it's it's just about reaching out and starting that that conversation yeah and what type of like what type of projects is sort of is Lorcon most confident in or wants to do? Like, oh, we've got we're 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 in our we're in our niche. It's uh, you know we had um, we had a couple of really good commercial fitouts um, kind of uh, in twenty twenty, and then because it's not our main strength, and we do it through architects that we know and, and through clients that we have relationships with. You know, it um, we we that that kind of went quiet a bit through COVID, and the architectural renovation extension side on heritage homes, you know, that 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 kept very strong, strong throughout. And uh, the projects that we have is, you know, it's it's the same it's the same space, mm. but on a on a larger value scale of projects, yeah. you know. So we're we're the the value of the projects is larger but we're concentrated in the amount of jobs that we do. So we're not, you know, uh, going back to years, I was doing six projects at once on a medium scale. You know, this, this next 12 plus months will be, um, will be three projects on a, on a larger scale. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about? No, not particularly. Thanks for having me. I think that was a pretty beautiful conversation um thanks for coming i appreciate you a lot brother likewise thank Thank you you. for all your work continue the journey continue success